Rackham used to do some really amazing work when it came to terrain, and I always wanted to figure out how to do it. And uh, I worked a little bit on how to do the rocks that they used to do in the tutorials, and uh, this is the result, and I hope you get something out of it. But uh, I had a lot of fun doing it, and the problem is once I figure out something, I have a hard time finishing uh, what I'm doing. So uh, this is just gonna be a small snippet of how to, how to do the rocks and some stucco work that they used to do in the tutorials, but Rackham was amazing, and that's where my inspiration came from. So hope you enjoy. So what we want to do first is we want to put wood grains in this uh, basswood so we can make a container for the, the plaster paris and so we can, uh, in order to carve that plaster paris. So I've already cut out some foam core that we're going to glue the wood to once we have the grains in it. Um, but what, how you put the grains in this, you use a wire brush and you just score the wood. But what I like to do before I do that, use the wire brush, is I just like to kind of put some defects and just kind of mar up the wood a little bit so it doesn't look like it's, you know, a brand spanking do off the mill. And it's just something I like to do. You don't have to do that. And then on the end pieces like this, I like to kind of store a little bit. And also, I'll make grooves down the wood a little bit too. That way, the wire brush has something to follow or dig into a little bit more. And then you can also carve it too, which I've done on other pieces. So we'll go ahead and finish the rest of these, uh, these pieces for the, the containment of the plaster Paris. All right, now that we have this all cut out and uh, these are all have the wood grain in them. And the re uh, question might come up, the reason why I use basswood, it's harder than balsa, and so it takes the grains better. The other thing too is I don't know what I was thinking. Instead of using an X-Acto knife to do the grooves in these uh, before you start using the wire brush, a tool like this, it has a lot more rigidity to it. It also has a fatter tip to it. Lends to putting gouges in it way better. I don't know what I was thinking. This is what I always use, so. I don't know why I was thinking to use an X-Acto knife. I do use an X-Acto knife or a hobby knife on the ends before I do the wire brush. The one thing too is some balsa, some basswood is a lot harder. This happens to be a really hard basswood, so it's a little hard to work. So it wasn't as vigorous in creating my wood grains that I normally uh, I normally do. But uh, let's go ahead and glue these on so we can get going with the other stuff. And one thing to do is don't glue this on yet because then you don't know if these pieces are gonna fit. And so what I like to do is I just like to glue the supporting pieces in first. Now, one thing when you're doing wood and uh, small scale like this, you want to exaggerate things. You want to exaggerate features such as the cutoff edges. I mean, something that comes off a mill is not going to be all chipped up like this. But when it comes time to paint it, it looks a lot better. Uh, so I would just go ahead and exaggerate some of your features that you put on put on different pieces that you make. At least that's what I like to do. It's a preference that I have because just when it comes time to painting, it gives a lot more character. So see now what I did because I have gaps here and a gap here. So, I rip that bad boy out. And, uh, rip that one off. I should have, what I normally do is I normally 
pre-fit. I don't know. I'm rushing on this one. I should have pre-fit this one too to make sure everything works, but I didn't. So now you're going to see me tear things apart, which is okay too. So I'm just going to shave this off the back. I'm going to shave an end off. Like I said, this is pretty brutal basswood. It's normally not this tough. Man, this stuff sucks. Almost, just because this uh, bottom part right here is sloped a little bit. For years, I used to use PVA for this. I don't know what I was thinking. It wasn't so much better doing this. And work with it quicker. So we have that. So now we're gonna make some, some plaster pairs. One a little bit thicker, kind of like one pancake batter. This will need to sit up for about a half hour. You don't want it completely dry when you work it. It's way more difficult. So I would recommend doing this in segments if, if at all possible. That's one of the reasons I also have dividers in there so I don't have to work it all at once. It makes it way easier to work with. Like I said, you don't want it, you don't want it dry all the way because it totally defeats the purpose of what you're doing. And then I'll just work it into the corners like that. Now, if I want to have a rock that is bulging up or something to that effect. I'll mount a little bit more plaster Paris on there. That way I have more rock to work with or more plaster Paris to work with. Now what I'm doing here is I want one side kind of like a stucco and it's with there where you have rock showing through where the stucco came off or whatever material that they chose to put on there. So that's why I'm working the set a little bit different so it's smoother. Not necessarily, I don't care if it's really smooth. That way I can use that mound right there to a rock that's protruding out just a little bit more, give it more character. And now we'll let it dry. Well, at least dry well enough. So I'm gonna time it right now. So I kind of get an idea of how to work with it. Also depends how much water you put in with your mixture as well. That will determine your dry time. All right, it's been about 35, 40 minutes uh, for this to dry to the point where I wanna work it now. So this is gonna be the stucco side. So I'm just gonna kind of check it and see how it works. Just working the rock. I want a rock showing up. Still a little wet to work with, but it's still fine. It's it's right there on the edge. Maybe too early still. It's not quite there. Anyway, it's not quite where I want it. So let's give it another about 10, 15 minutes. All right, let's try again. Uh, I'm gonna work up here this time because it's a little bit higher, so it's probably gonna dry. Probably dry it already. So on this side, I want to give the illusion that the rock continues to go down. So I'm just going to kind of follow that slope. So it looks like this, they just threw a large rock in here. It's kind of an anchor point. And one thing also too, and when doing this, be fluid, because as you sculpt something, it may change as you're doing it. I really don't have anything set in mind when I'm doing it. I need to have a sign. Amanda tells me I need to have a sign. Yeah, you do. <laughs> anyway, so back to carving the rock. I need to have, one of my sons came downstairs. I don't have a sign. I need to have a sign up that people know that I'm doing this. 
Uh, this is my bad. So I'm just curious, how many people don't like the sound of their voice on when they hear it? <laughs> I don't. Still wet enough, this works. Just to rub it. So I'm gonna have a rock kind of down here. And one thing to keep in mind when you have joints like this or where rocks meet, just kind of make sure it looks organic and you can actually sink it down even further. It's one of the things that I realized that the that Rackham did, or at least what I could appear, what I could discern what they did. So on my first pass, I'm just trying to, I don't like to kind of get the lay of the, how the rocks are gonna to come together. So I don't know if you can see right there, kind of the rock kind of just like, looks like it just pushes down and fits. I don't like that. I want to, so I want to round that off to make it look like it seats more. And so by doing that, I may dig down deeper. And I think that's one of the tricks that I missed before when I used to do this is I wouldn't do that. So if you, do, if you dig it down deeper, all of a sudden now it looks like it seats better. <clears throat> and I think that's one of the tricks I was missing. Plus when you do that as well, it also lends itself to uh, more con uh, more contrast as far as when you end up painting it, painting it because you have deeper lines and deeper insets so you can give it more contrast when you're actually doing this. So 
see how that one's kind of just right there kind of just dips down I kind of that's what I'll do is I'll fall that down until it looks like the rocks naturally meet and sometimes you just go deeper that way and then round things up all when I'm all said and done when I get the basic layout I'll also come back and clean things up a little bit just to make sure I get the the round edges that I want and so you don't have those sculpting slopes or the kind of problem so you see how that little piece right there as well I don't really don't want that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to progress this rock down as if it's sloped down in and also this one too until it looks like they come to a natural meeting point See how you have that sculpt edge right there? It's hard, it might be hard to see, but I'll tilt up so there's a little bit more shadow. I don't like that. So I want to smooth all those out as best I can. But not entirely, because you want character. You don't want straight lines on nature. Nature doesn't have straight lines for the most part. Anyway, kind of get the idea. And then, just give it more character to the rocks. You can kind of come back with this a little bit. And give it some grooves. So it'll take your washes better. Show a little bit more character as well. Also kind of, kind of pockmark them too. Kind of stab them and flick them. Normally I take a little bit more time, but just you kind of get the idea of the concepts there. But I can't stress enough that it's hard for the light angle, but I can't stress enough that you don't want rocks to appear like this right here, where it just kind of looks like it's ab, kind of like a point. You kind of want to round that off. So they don't look like it's kind of been chiseled, so to speak, or I don't know how else to explain it. So when it's all said and done, this is something I sculpt. I sculpted and made a cast of. It's exaggerated. And then once it's painted, you kind of get the idea. Now we're gonna do the stucco side. And all that means is you're, just, you're doing the same technique that you have rocks exposed. I'm just kind of carving the edge of this where the stucco may have come off. One of the things I'll do with stucco is I'll come back with a sharp tool. And 
Now this is when you want it to be a little bit more dry because then your cracks are a lot more, they break because you're, there's not as much moisture in your material. So your cracks and look a lot better. I'll do the same, give it a texture. Those rocks aren't done, but the concept and the idea is there. But kind of see what it is. So that's how I do them. So I end up looking something like that. But pretty easy. Well, I shouldn't say easy. It took me a while. Just the concept. But like I said, going down in depth like right, like right here gives a lot more character to your rocks and having big rocks, like I said. And I exaggerated these a lot uh, just because I because it was a wall and I wanted that exaggeration. You don't always have to have a lot of exaggeration, but anyway, it's also messy. So <clears throat> there you have it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm glad you joined us in this tutorial. And if you have any requests, feel free to give me a request and I'll be more, to, more than happy to make an attempt. I can't promise anything. To me, that's the joy of creating something, but it's also a downfall because I have things that are years old that once I figure out how to do something, I don't go back and finish it. But with this new series and what I'm trying to do now, it gives me an excuse to finish those things. And I will be having whips uh, of the progress. So I hope you join us. But anyway, like I said, if you have any questions, comments, comment below and uh, let us know what you think. And uh, we'll, or like I said, if you have any suggestions. But until next time, I hope you have a good one. See you later. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> if you want to support us, you can support us at paypal.me slash platypusscotsman or Patreon. Um, comment below if you have any suggestions you want to see. As far as tutorials are concerned, let us know. And I hope you enjoy this and come back and have a good time. As always, links are in the description below. That was wrong to you. <laughs>